Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got mass harem with every anime verse. Part 3. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. Somewhere within the forest of death, Naruto was moving along in the shadows of the tall trees, as he's being followed by a squad of more root anbu, as they're here to capture him for their leader master. Jumping onto the next tree, one of them turned towards the squad leader. What are the plans for capturing him? Many of our squads had tried and were killed. The root agent asked as the squad leader scowled the area looking for their target. We're going to catch the demon thou he began, but couldn't finish his words as his heads get stabbed though claws of the demonic Uzumaki, who had jumped toward the squad leader, killing him on the spot with blood flying everywhere as a flash of blades cutting through the entire squad, as the once green leaves of the tree bleed into red, as body parts flew around against the trunks as well painting. The bark and ground with multiple splatters. That was what, the tenth squad that was sent to get me. One would think that they would come up something better by now, Naruto said with an irritated groan before continuing moving through the forest to bring back food for his mate slaves. Meanwhile within the Hokage Tower, Tsunade was reading yet another report of the demon attack, as her daughter Sayori is helping her out. So, this time, the demon attack and killed all of the Haika elders as well several of their clan members. But question is why. The Senju heiress mused crossing her arms under her enormous bust as she pondered at the insistent that happened a few days ago. Setting the report down, the busty Hokage turned towards her daughter. That is a good question, but here is a theory of mine. She said clasping her hands together resting her chin on top of them. What if Itomi is alive and told the demon, or was forced by the demon, to tell her who rules the Haika clan? She theorized since the Haika elders were strictly traditional with their clan's ways as well system that keeps them divided. Placing her hands upon her hips, the extremely endowed brunette began rebuffing her mother's theory. But it's still a theory though because the demon doesn't leave anyone alive, unless it has them live for a reason. She stated as she placed down the report as she starts frustratingly racking her head messing up her hair. Damn it. Just what is that demon even thinking? Is it a demonic ally? Or is it just a regular demon is out for blood? I just don't understand. She exclaimed completely frustrated by this demon as well the way it has been attacking. Rubbing two fingers against her temple, the blonde milf began with a breath. That is the question since on one hand, he is dealing with the corrupt. But at times, he is killing Anbu, even if they belong to Danzo. She said before taking a moment to think about what she just said. Well, I guess from their view, the second one is self-defense, but what is going through the demon's mind? Demons do have high bloodlust, but what if this one can't control his? She once again theorized since demons do have uncontrollable bloodlust like any natural predator. Hearing her mother's theory caused Sarah's eyes to widen as she snapped her fingers remembering something. Oh, that's right. Didn't we read something like that from a book when we were at Demon Country? She asked but then she remembers something else. Mom, isn't it that time of the year for the third to see that kid? What was his name again? She asked as her mother turned towards her with a downcast expression. He goes to see Naruto's grave. She solemnly said before focusing on the portraits of her sensei as well her predecessor. From what sensei said, he was a good kid, a prankster more so really, but he gets that from his mother. She explained as she sadly chuckled to herself, her eyes shredding a few tears as she recalled those days with her younger cousin, as her daughter rested a hand on her shoulder. Well, he was really cute from photos that the third had of him, the Senju era said, recalling those old photos of a cute little boy with whiskers on his face, as it was a real shame he died since he was family, even if she didn't grow up within the village. Yeah, he was, but if he was alive, he would have been a heartthrob and heartbreaker. Tsunade joked with a sigh since he would have his father's looks as well his mother's personality. Like his folks I bet, since he does look like that guy. The younger woman added as she points at the portrait of the fourth Hokage, Akaminato Namikaze. Well, in truth that is his father as one of Danzo's roots told me he was dead the night of his birth. The Senju matriarch stated as she clenched her hands in anger, since the old warhawk lied to her about the death of her godson, something which her daughter quickly noticed. Then why don't you remove his status as an elder then? She questioningly exclaimed as the bustier blonde milf sighs as she tells her daughter that there were several reasons why she couldn't remove him of his status. Elsewhere in Konoha, Ikumi is working on the clothing racks for her store, while talking with another woman who stands 5 ft 4 inches in height, as she has a matcha skin tone, along with short blonde hairstyle and a pixie cut, with a single strand sticking from the top of her head. And turquoise colored eyes as she has a nicely toned body as well curvaceous pear shaped figure, consisting of large supple cup priests, slim waist with a flat toned stomach. 
Wide curvy hips with thick thunder thighs and supple bubbly rear connected to long lusciously toned legs, as her outfit consists of a white and red flame pattern bikini top, under a white button shirt tight in a knot showing her abdomen, maroon A-line skirt, and brown calf high boots, as she also wears a croaker around her neck. This woman is Akumi Mito, longtime friend of Akumi Yunichiya, as well expert in all things meat. And. To avoid confusion between the two, I'll be referring Akumi Yunichiya as Akumi Yu, while referring to Akumi Mito as Akumi M from here on out. Currently, both similarly named women were talking about something pretty personal. How long has it been since Naruto was taken from us Ms. Eel? The dark-skinned blonde asked the raven-haired milf while taking a bite from her homemade beef skewers. It's been about six years Ms. Beefcakes. Akumi Yu simply replied as she thought that maybe she should tell her friend that Naruto is really alive. As well a very great funk is her cheeks dusted pink at the memory of their time together, as she's currently wearing a white shirt with long lavender colored sleeves, as well her store's logo and black pants, that really hugs against her hips and legs, as she finish hanging the new clothes on the racks. Akumi M let out a sad sigh upon hearing her friend's answer. Ooh, I miss him very much. He was so cute when he was younger she said leaning against the counter as she rested her cheek against her palm, while tracing small circles in the air with her skewer before taking another bite. If he was still alive, then I might have tried to get with him. She admitted since moving here to Kanoha wasn't exactly easy, since she was originally from the land of lightning, just like how her mill friend was from the land of water. Hearing the busty chef saying that struck the Yunaji woman the wrong way. No way. She possessively exclaimed grabbing the younger woman by her shoulders as she began roughly shaking her, making her mega-sized meatballs bounce, before staring her straight in the eyes. I would get him first before you since I'm more experienced in fecks. She boldly stated as she has a sickly sweet smirk on her face. No way. I'm way prettier than you. Akumi M shouted back as she flipped the bustier ravenette on top of the counter before climbing on top as she straddled her waist. And while I may not have the same sized milk jugs as you, I still got plenty of meat in all the right pack of gays she smugly countered, smacking her thick meaty thighs and plump juicy rump roast, before crossing her arms under her bust with a saucy grin on her face. Seeing that she was currently pinned, as well getting such a close view of her chef friend's lower body, Akumi Yu released a sigh in defeat. Then maybe we could have shared him. She said with a knowing glint in her eye as the blonde stops and thinks about it. Well that is a good point there Akumi, but what's the point since he's gone, she reminded as she once again gets sad about it as well a little conflicted since she doesn't like sharing, since her father always told her that sharing is a sign of weakness, since she's been feuding with Yakiniku Q since moving here as they are her competition. Betting off the store owner, Akumi M helped her friend back to her feet when a voice suddenly spoke getting their attention. Hey Akumi Nichin, I need some new clothes if you can you help me with that. Hearing that the voice was coming from the back of the store, both women turned to see a hooded figure getting one to smile lovingly, while the other got in a fighting position. Or are you going to be naughty as I will have to punish your sexy ass they sexually commented as the matcha skinned blonde was about to charge, only to be grabbed and pulled by her arm. Akumi, please let me explain of what is going on, and hopefully you don't get mad at me afterward. Akumi Yu said as she starts explaining of what going on to her friend, who seems to have stay calm throughout the whole talk. So, that's about it, do you have any questions? She asked letting go of the younger woman's arm as she crossed her arms under her enormous knockers, waiting for her to ask or say anything. Taking a deep breath, Akumi M began to speak. Who the hell is he? She shouted while pointing leering at the figure only to blink as she saw no one there only to quickly gasp and moan, as she feels someone groping her freests. It has been a very long time Nichi and you've gotten sexier in these last six years, the figure said as he continues to grope and massage her meaty melons, before moving downward to her even meatier hips thighs, making her moan as she reached back and pulled down his hood, only for her eyes to widen upon seeing who she thought was long dead. Isbursing has two clones, Akumi Yu and Akumi M falling onto their very sore and abused rears, Naruto grunted as the memory transfer caused him to once again explode all over the shower, coating his two niche hands with his seed, before they quickly latched onto his beep, as they both sucked down his final load, wanting to still remember the taste as they slipped into blissful unconsciousness. Of such slutty niche hands I have he breathed with a pant as he dropped to his knees as he tenderly rubbed their bloated bellies, watching with a grin as the mate mark appeared upon the Mito woman's womb, showing that she'd just been impregnated with his child. After getting cleaned up as well putting both women to bed, the demonic Yuzumaki was jumping over buildings staying in the shadows on the night. Maybe I might have gone too far with Akumi ni and Akumi ni he thought thinking that maybe he shouldn't have done such wild and intense fex, since his ni chans won't be waking up for a day or two, since he's been going non-stop, since he'd gotten his little herd of Yuga cows. Get the funk away from me. 
His thoughts were broken when he suddenly heard shouting as he stops in his tracks as he then goes towards it until he finds himself in a back alley where he saw several Chunins as they appear heavily drunk as he saw Red, seeing that the group was surrounding a woman trying to cover herself as her clothes were torn up. Back the hell off you drunk bastards. The woman screamed out his anger as Naruto shifted his hands into claws before pulling his hood up. Shut the funking hell up you bimbo bitch. One of the drunken Chunins yelled with a belch as he grabbed a woman by her arms, forcing her enormous freests to bounce as they're completely exposed. Do you have any idea just how much of a funking tease you are? He added slamming her roughly against the wall as he grabbed and squeezed her giant fleshy orbs as well her equally huge ass. But with these gigantic freests of yours, along with that fat ass that's bounce and jiggle whenever you walk by or are just standing even. It's like you're just asking to buy funk like the bimbo whore you really are. He exclaimed as the others are agreeing with him. Which is why we're going to have our way with you, slut. A female Chunin declared wanting to suck and grab those huge boobies, and nothing was going to stop her from making this bitch her bitch as the group began moving closer to their capture victim as they were about to do something. You think it's really a good idea to do this with the demon running around at night? Asked a sinister sounding voice from behind them as the group of drunken Chunins turned around and see who seems to be a hooded man, thinking that he wants to join in. If you heck want your heck turn with this slut, then heck wait. The third Chunin said through hiccups as the man groping the woman threw her down against the ground. Plus, the demon of the forest is a myth. A story parents tell their children so they will be good little children. Said the supposed leader as Naruto plainly looks at them as he brings his right hand in front of his face, stroking his chin. Then let's test it and see if it's a myth or not, he wickedly said as he decapitated the two closest to him, shocking the entire group as he smirks at the rest. Because, the last time I've checked, I wasn't a myth, since I'm as real as you are dead he added, making them all realize that he's the demon as the leader tried screaming, but his mouth gets pierced through by the claws before yanking upwards, splitting his head in half, as he dropped dead as the other Chunins as well the woman are shocked upon seeing this as stares upon the remaining group of would-be rapists with glowing red eyes. Also, tell them who have sent you when you get to hell he added with a sadistic tone as he charged at the female chinin with a downward slash, slicing her in half like a knife through butter, before swiping at her upper half a few extra times as pieces and blood littered the ground. Before anyone could react, the demonic Yuzumaki kills two more by piercing them through their chests and ripping out their hearts before squeezing them like overly ripe fruit as another two tried to escape but didn't get very far as he shoots a single claw from both his hands, piercing them through the back of their heads. I'm Otherfinker. One of the remaining Chunins tried to attack him with a kunai, only to found out that they poorly planned attempt easily gets blocked by his arm breaking the blade upon contact, even though it was very dull and rusted, meaning that it would have broken at any point. Giving the drunken fool a blank stare, Naruto gave an unamused snort. Are you really that much of a fool thinking that would actually work? He said sound more like a question than an insult, as he grabs the Chunin's head and smashes them against the wall with all of his strength, as their head exploded in a spatter of blood, skull fragments, and brain matter. Seeing that they were the only one left, the last Chunin fell to their knees, begging to be spared only for a large spike to shot up out of the ground, impaling them like a cocktail weenie, as he looks at the woman who turns out to be Sayori Senju, as she's standing against the wall. Come any closer and I will am make you regret it. She threatens with false bravery as she didn't want to admit it, but she's really afraid since this demon just killed several Chunins right in front of her, and now he's walking up to her, but won't let her fear get the best of her, as she quickly made hand signs. Fire style. Fire Dragon Jutsu. She exclaimed as she takes a very deep breath and lets out a massive dragon made out of fire, as her Jutsu hits the demon dead on as well, burning the bodies of her dead rapists, except she doesn't hear screams of agony or pain like she'd expected. Instead the demon simply walks out of the intense flames complexly unscathed as his clothes were still intact, along with no burns anywhere, as she sees scales on his hands. Nice try, but next time actually try and hit me with your best shot when you're using that weak jutsu Naruto taunted, since he just saved her from getting raped like he'd done with Hitomi, as he continued to walk towards her. Seeing that her jutsu didn't have any effect, the extremely busty brunette stepped back pressing against the wall behind her. B but, that was my best shot. She mentally shouted while breathing heavily since she'd use a lot of chakra before the next thing she knew, she gets kneed hard in the stomach, causing her to gasp out as she faints from it as she drops down. The demonic Yuzumaki quickly catches her as he placed her extremely endowed body over his shoulders. Now then, let's drop you off to your mother's workplace. He said to himself as he jumps onto the rooftops as he heads over to the Hokage Tower, while carrying the Senju heiress, while thinking about how insanely bountiful her body felt against him. Once he got into the tower, he opened a window of the Hokage's office as he went inside and put Sayori on the couch and was about to leave when suddenly the lights turned on. Who the hell are you and what are you doing to my daughter? 
A woman's voice loudly demanded as they sound pissed off as Naruto quickly turned to see Tsunade charging towards him with a fist beat back as she superpowered punch directly in his face. But it didn't do anything to him at all. As the female Kage is shocked to see that her punch didn't do any harm, as she then notices the hard black scales making her hiss and curse as she also noticed that her hand was littered with small cuts. Taking this moment of opportunity, the whiskered-faced man socked her right in the gut, lunching her hard against the wooden wall, leaving a large indent. All right, showtime he thought as he lets out a mighty demonic roar that shook the entire building, as the sound was heard throughout the entire village, as he soon stopped and looked down at the bustier woman, as she was coughing up blood and saliva. You should be thanking me since I've saved her from being raped by a group of drunken fools he stated as he used his claws to destroy the lights, making it completely dark as he made his escape. But the lights destroyed, Tsunade couldn't see a thing, so she won't know which way the demon could have gone to, as she then goes to check on her daughter, as she doesn't see any wounds as she sighs out in relief. Just what is that demon's motivation? She asked herself, wondering why the demon didn't just kill her like all the others, but decides that for now, she's just glad that Sayori is alright. But in the Hokage office, Tsunade was pacing back and forth with a grim expression on her face, as an entire three months and two weeks has passed since her close encounter with the demon, as more deaths had kept piling up by the savage creature. Even with all that had been going on, Kanoha is still hosting the Chunin exams with a change of it, and that is to found clues of the demon as well to capture him as the second part of the Chunin exam. She said to herself looking out the window towards the forest of death, where the second part of the exams should currently now be taking place. At the entry gates of Training Ground 44, Aka the Forest of Death, Anko, a woman with spiky purple hair tied in a pineapple ponytail dressed in a mesh bodysuit hugging her slender-toned hergless figure, as well her ample double G cup bust under a tan trench coat and burnt orange miniskirt, was standing in front of everyone as she explained that they were originally going to use the scrolls. But there was a change of plans. Now do all of you brats get it, good. Now then, as I said, gather any info of the demon that lives in this forest, and by some chance of pure luck, capture him and bring him over to the tower at the middle of the forest of death. The perplet informed every genin in front of her before a sadistic grin appeared on her lips. However, the chances of capturing him are most likely zero she added with a mad shackle, getting many of the younger genins nervous as some gulped fearing for their lives, while other either just scoffed or showed no fear at this so-called demon, thinking that this was just some kind of scare tactic, just like the first part of the exams. Oh, and one last word of advice, don't die, so have fun, since you all have five days to do so. She cheerfully exclaimed before snapping her fingers as a few other Chunin proctors were handing out a piece of paper to every genin present. Now then, sign this as ensuring that Kanoha isn't responsible for you and or your team's deaths during this part of the exam. She told them all since the second part of these exams always have some misfortunate deaths. As a few Chunin were handing out papers for the Genins to sign, teammate, now consisting of Hinata along with Inuki replacing Kibit ever since his death, as her old teammates had died during a mission without her a month before the exams began. As well a third member whom happens to be the only man on the team, as he's wearing a dark grey high-collared shirt that's covering the entire lower half of his face under a mossy grey jacket with a hood, as well a small pair of black sunglasses, so no one could see his eyes as his name is Shino, as he's currently coming up a plan for him and his team to gather any info on the demon. But won't engage any combat toward it. As he is talking with Anuki along with her Ninkan companion, Fang, which is large dog with dark blue fur, as well as Akamaru, who is also a large dog with white fur as well, Kiba's Ninkan whom she'd also taken in since his death, as they're listening to the Aburami's plans. But however, Hinata is the only one who isn't listening as she's thinking about of what happened during the last couple of months, it's been almost two months now since father died, that no good asshole, and it was all thanks to Naruto-sama's plan she thought replaying the memory within her mind. Flashback, two months ago. Naruto has taken all of his Hyuga cows back to their clan's home after an entire month since his encounter with Tsunade, as he'd spent that time with non-stop mating with his mate slaves, as well as telling them of how he plans to lead Hiashi's death. So, you are all in agreement with my plan to kill the stuck-up bastard? He asked as they all nodded. Of course, Naru-kun, since I don't want him to even attempt to harm my daughters as well my future grandchildren. Hitomi stated rubbing her stomach which was beginning to show a slight baby bump, as her freeze were also slightly bigger now being an L cup. Yeah daddy, don't let the mean old man hurt our babies, Hanabi added with a childishly sounding tone, as she latched onto her daddy like a child would do with their parent, as her mind and spirit were completely shattered from all the non-stop punishments, developing both a sexual kink for spanking as well a daddy complex. 
embracing the ex heiress within his arm, the demonic Uzumaki began explaining his plan to kill the Haika Patriarch, which would be by slowly poisoning him with several small amounts of a special kind of poison that causes major harm to both the brain and heart, as he took out a vial containing said poison. Luckily with help from Retsu-chan, we have just that kind of poison we need. He said eyeing the vial recalling the promise he'd made to the raven-haired nurse for neglecting her for the past month, since he'd been too distracted breeding his haika cows, he had forgotten his other mates, especially since most of them were carrying his children. And we all remember the plan, right? Momo spoke up as she turned her attention towards Natsu, still wary about the maid's loyalty, since she attempted to assassinate her sister-in-law, as well isolate her youngest niece, to become the elder's figurehead. Yes mother, the plan of Uncle Hiyashi's death will be assured. Hisha said with her twin nodding in agreement. Flash back over. As soon after that, the days began passing by, Natsu as the maid that would be giving two sand food or drinks that were laced with the poison, whenever she had the chance with me and Akari me helping her out whenever he asked for tea. The busty blue tea thought remembering every step of her master mate's plan. Days continued to go by as Two Sen's condition kept getting worse, the look in his eyes was most amusing, seeing and watching as he couldn't understand what was happening, nor even knowing why or how until one morning. Natsu found him dead within his bed, having died in his sleep she mentally mused with a smile, as her Yuzumaki lover's plan had worked as she along with her mother, volunteered to be the ones to inform him of its success, followed by the hours of intense lovemaking, to ensure her impregnation since, while upset and jealous, that her mother got into her crush first with taking his virginity along with. Getting pregnant with his first child, she wasn't going to let her sisters, aunt, and even cousins get ahead of her. Sitting within her office as the new Yuga clan head, Hitomi, as well her daughter Hinata, had gone to see Naruto to inform him about her ex-husband's death, which was good news, since she could now return and lead the clan, until Akari could take over. But you seems like Hinata is still jealous of you little one the perplet Ku dropping her baby bump with a smile since well nearly everyone within the clan was happy that she's alive and well. She put on an act when Hiashi demandingly questioned her pregnancy, accusing her of sleeping with the demon, before countering his question with another asking when was the last time they had fex together, which shut him up when she boldly announced to the entire clan that the only reason the demon let her live was because she was pregnant with Hiashi's child, with Momo helping to sell the act when she informed him that she was pregnant a few days before her sudden disappearance months prior. Everyone still thinks that you're that bastard's child is only me, Momo. As well your sisters and cousins knowing the truth she said tenderly to her growing baby, as she will continue to lead the clan until Akari becomes the next head at the end of the year, after having her status as heiress given back to her, since Hanabi had now become a daddy's girl for her new lover. The right everyone, head to your assigned gates and be ready for the test. Anko announced as everyone soon heard a loud terrifying roar from within the forest, as a few of the gathered genin wet themselves, as that roar wasn't from a normal animal, because it sounded a lot more demonic. Well, looks like he's home the snake mistress laughed with a sadistic grin on her face. As every genin were going to their assigned gates, Hinata along with Anuki had taken notes of the girls from other teams from different villages. The busty Haika then starts thinking about her sensei sister figure, a crimson-eyed raven-haired woman named Kurana Yuhi. Kurana sensei would make a wonderful slave mate for Naruto-sama. Especially since her current boyfriend is cheating on her as she doesn't even know it. But Naruto-sama can fix that and change her mind about dating a Suma team. She mused and thought as she began thinking about talking to her lover master, about funking her sensei sometime in the future. The Inuyasuka meanwhile was taking mental notes about Anko. That Anko woman is one sexy hot bitch, since Narusama will have fun claiming her when he has the chance as well, maybe make her into a mother like he did my sister she mentally yipped as she's already imagining her alpha funking the proctor into submission as well motherhood. Pondering her thoughts some more, the lavender-eyed blue tea began thinking of other women her master could claim. Let's see oh. I think Naruto-sama would have a wonderful time with Tamari-san once I get her to meet Naruto-sama, he will rock her world as well her entire body. She mentally gushed as she remembers meeting an older sandy blonde woman named Tamari from Suna a week before the exam started as both of them had become fast friends since her master would enjoy pulling those pigtails while funking her from behind, maybe even her younger sister since the redette seems very unhinged and could use an incredibly good laid. The fair-looking brunette soon grinned as she began thinking about their old classmate Ino Yamanaka. I don't know if Narusama remembers her, but I bet he would love break that bitch by dominating her body, destroying her mind, and filling her holes completely full of hot coom until she's nothing more than a beep-hungry breeder. She mentally howls in a husking tone as she could already, she the gossip queen reduced to effects craze bimbo. Both women were then broken out of their thoughts when they heard Anko yelling out. Open the gates and let the genins go. 
she announced as the gates opened, and every gen and teams went inside as a few quickly turned back as they soon heard the demons roaring again as she cackles amusingly. Some of them are going to die, oh well she said with mock concern as she pulled a dango from her sleeve as she starts eating them happily. Somewhere within the forest of death, Naruto yanked his claws from inside the head of a giant snake as he looked at it with confusion. Where the hell did this snake even come from? He questioned out loud since he knows every creature that lives within this forest as well, having no memory of killing giant snakes before. Something isn't right here, and I'm going to find out why. But before I do he growled as he sees more snakes as they're moving toward him. I'm going to make me and my mate some snakeskin clothing he said flexing his claws out as he's ready to kill them all. I know it's not alright, I know we're not okay. Your hand is not in mine, you take a different way. And when I'm thinking about this, I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied. Even when you are next to me, you seem so far out of my way. The demonic Yuzumaki splints towards the incoming serpents before jumping onto the nearest one's head and pierces through its skin as he then starts running downward around its body slashing away at it as blood spurted out of the snake as its body splits into multiple sliced pieces. I found myself out of control. I don't know why you've been so cruel. I found myself down in the hole. But something to say. Another colossal-sized snake lunged towards the blonde demon from behind, only to then get grabbed by its mouth, as he then rips the snake's lower jaw clean off, before stabbing it through the head from the roof of its maw. I'm back in time, now it's fine. I am on my own again, but you're on my mind. You've broken me and now I feel just the pain. You crossed the line, no matter what game you played. Whatever you did to me, now it's fine. I am on my own again, get the hell out of my way. Naruto grabs the dead snake's fangs, ripping them out from the gums, and throws them towards another snake that was lunging at him, as the fangs pierce directly into the serpent's eyes, as it hisses screech and pain thrashing around aimlessly. I know it's all over, I know what we have said. But I've got to forget and throw it all away. And when I'm coming back at home, I'm scared inside. So tired to fix it every time, that's what you are. The Yuzumaki then leaps towards the blinded beast kicking the fangs, pushing them deeper into the snake's eyes, as the gigantic reptile screeched out in immense pain before his stabbed, both his clawed head deep into its head, piercing directly into its brain, killing it on the spot, as it drops dead against the ground, creating a slight tremor. I found myself out of control. I don't know why you've been so cruel. I found myself down in the hole. But something to say. The demon of the forest soon looked at the last remaining snake who hisses at him as he jumped up into the trees to avoid the serpent strike. You know what, I've always wondered what snakes taste like cooked he said maliciously as his claws shifted back into normal hands as he began making hand signs. I'm back in time, now it's fine. I am on my own again, but you're on my mind. You've broken me and now I feel just the pain. You cross the line, no matter what game you play. Whatever you did to me, now it's fine. I am on my own again. Yang style. Darkness Fire Claws Jutsu. He called out with eyes glowing demonic red as black fire forms around his hands, as he shifted them back into their clawed form, as he shot himself towards the final serpent, as it lunges at him with maw wide open, as the Yuzumaki was swallowed whole only for the snake to screech, as its entire body became engulfed in flames as it was incinerated from the inside before dropping dead as an extra burned corpse. Bearing himself from inside the charred serpent, Naruto sees that all of the giant snakes are now dead, as he grabs himself a piece of cooked snake meat and starts eating. Just where did all of these overgrown snakes come from anyway? He asks himself, wondering where all of these snakes come from until he notices a smell in the air that doesn't belong any of the genins, it smells like something that doesn't belong. This smell, it reeks of years of bloodshed, and that can't be that red head with a tattoo on her forehead no, this is a mixture of blood as well snakes and chemicals. I wonder he pondered as he stops eating the piece of snake meat and throws it away as he follows the scent of blood and snakes. Elsewhere at the forest of death, Team 7 was getting their asses handed to them by a feminine looking man, with long greasy brown hair and full lips, wearing a headband with the etching of a patch of grass, showing that he is from another village. Is this the best that someone from the mighty Ichiha clan of Konoha can do? I'm very disappointed. The Kusa ninja mocked having expected a challenge. Glaring at the enemy ninja, Sasuke with Sharingan activated yelled out in anger. I'm just getting star his rant was soon interrupted when out of nowhere a claw looking blade pierced through the Kusa ninja as blood started to come out of the wound as the Kusa ninja cried out before melting into a pile of mud, revealing them two only had been a clone. So, that's what I've smelled. A demonic voice spoke sending shivers through Sakura's spine as she and her teammates looked to see the demon standing from a tree branch. 
I have to say, you have one corrupt soul on you even more corrupted than the people of Kanoha the demon of the forest commented with his eyes glowing red as he shot his claws throughout the area, making the two men of Team 7 leap out of the way while the Pinket, still standing frozen at seeing the demon for real, gotten pierced in her left shoulder as she fell backwards screeching. Leaping out from the shadows casted by the forest's canopy, the same Kusa ninja drew out his sword blocking the incoming projectiles. Well, I'll be, I thought it was just some tall tale, but it seems that it's true. There really is a demon living in this forest he said with a creepy pleased tone as well a very disturbing grin. Well then, before I kill you and discover your secrets, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Orochimaru, founder and leader of Atagakur, as well as one of the three Sanin said the now identified Orochimaru, as he looked at the Yuzumaki like a Great Dane looks at food. Oh geez, my rapo meter is going way off the charts with you. Have you funked anyone in a long time since I think you could do so much better than duck ass, pasty boy, and Mr. Pink's over there? Naruto mocked pushing out his middle finger as well twitching rapidly, as well making the beeping sounds before releasing a mocked horrify scream. I'm a lady you stupid demon. And take back what you say about Sasuke-kun. Screeched the banshee as she yanked the blade from her shoulder and hurled it back towards the demon, only for it to miss by several feet in both height and distance. Man. Let's face it, Sakura's pathetic since the only reason she passed in the anime was by only her book smarts, as she never put any effort into physical training or even weapon practice. The snake Sanin wasn't even phased by the insult as he scoffed. Joke all you want, it won't prevent me from strapping your naked corpse on my table as I poke and probe your insides to claim your secrets, he boldly stated as he was ready to strike at the demon, only to then felt something stabbed him through his back, as he glanced downward to seize five blades piercing out of through his chest as he sees another demon behind him as the he was about to attack burst into smoke, revealing it to have only been a shadow clone. Just as Naruto was about to stab Orochimaru through his head next, the Sanin's body suddenly turns into mud, revealing to have been another mud clone, as the Uzumaki's eyes flashed with annoyance upon seeing that his prey has escaped as he starts smelling, only to quickly dodge a fireball. Hold it right there, demon. You have a lot to answer for. Sasuke shouted as he starts leaping towards the monster that slaughtered his father and clansmen, as he quickly gone through hand signs for another jutsu. Fire style. Grand fireball jutsu. He called channeling all his anger and rage as well his chakra creating the hugest fireball he ever created, about the size of an ox, as the jutsu crashes against the tree the demon was standing in, as the entire trunk became engulfed in flames before crashing over as the Ichiha smirked with arrogance. Burn in hell demon. That's what you get for daring to mess with the mighty Ichiha clan. He boasted while Sakura cheered seeing that her precious Asuke kun killed the demon, while Sai made a crash comment about his beep earning him a smack from the pinket. Was that meant to hurt me? The demon mocked causing Team 7 to freeze stiff as they turned back around as their eyes, Sasuke and Sakura's anyway, turned white in shock and horror as the demon stood just above them as neither his body nor clothes were even scorched. Oh, I see now he growled quickly leaping through the branches as he grabbed the Ichiha air by his neck, pinning him against the tree. This was all about what I did to your clan, isn't it he said pressing pressure against the raven-haired Jenin's throat while also flaring his kai. Funny, I didn't take you as an Achiha since that guy what was his name again he paused trying to remember the name of Makoto's dead ex-husband, not having thought about it since the Achiha milf always screams his name whenever he gets the chance to visit her for their annual romp sessions. Oh right I remember now, Fugaku team had that bastard called himself mighty as well, but in the end, he was just so easy to kill that it was pathetic. He taunted with a laugh, recalling just how easy it was for him to kill the former clan head, as well making his wife forget about his entire existence every time he and the Achiha matriarch would funk together. Sneering at the demon, Sasuke reached into his weapon pouch and pulled out a kunai ready to stab this monster in the leg in order to get freed only for the handheld blade to snap failing to pierce the skin. I won't back down you demon. Not until I have my ga. He began to rant only to receive a hard punch to the gut, making him cough up saliva as the demonic Uzumaki tightened his grip around his throat, making him choke and gag for air. I don't give a funk about you or what you want, since you're nothing but an obstacle standing in my way, Naruto growled menacingly as he lifted the Achiha air up and tossed him several yards as his body slams against another tree before dropping hard against the ground getting knocked out cold. Hi hi hi. The blonde demon then hears the team's banshee screaming as he sees the Haruno shrieking as she slugs her right fist against his covered face. Crash shatter. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
You're too loud, so I've done this world the favor of removing your voice and screams for good Naruto annoyingly growled as the pink cat was crying in fear. Nuuuu. This can't be it. Sasuke kun, save me ee. Sakura mentally cried in her head wishing for her Ichiha savior to rescue her, before getting smacked against the forest floor lying unconscious. After the Yuzumaki demon send the now muted banshee flying, he drops down to another branch as he looks at Sai. If I were you, I would leave this forest now, since I won't be so merciful next time he growled in a threatening tone, as he sees the sky darkening as well seeing lightning flashes before rain began falling. Leave now and tell your master to send out some fresher meat, as I'm growing bored of slaughtering his lapdogs he added, surprising the root agent who began feeling fear flood his senses, despite years of Danzo's training to kill off all emotions. Sai quickly gathered up his unconscious teammates before sealing them within stasis storage scrolls, as he leaves right away, well knowing that this encounter must be reported to his master at once. Seeing that the root agent was long gone, Naruto smells the air, hoping to catch Orochimaru's scent, before the rain washes away any trace. Within another part of the forest of death, a team of genins with a sound note on their headbands has been running in the rain for the last hour or two, as the downpour just kept coming down hard. Why are we in this forsaken rain? Complained the soul woman on the team as she has very long black hair reach her calves with a violet ribbon tied at the end, and black eyes as her outfit consists of a pale green vest, which clung to her toned torso abdomen and supple cup bosom, due to being heavily soaked, a snake patterned scarf around her neck as well matching skirt pants. And black calf high open toed boots. And why the hell are we going with the plan to destroy Kanoha again? She added wishing that she was back in Odo snuggling with her girlfriend instead of out here in a massive forest getting soaked to the bone. One the two men with his entire completely wrapped up in bandages, save for his left eye and ear, as well wearing a straw raincoat over a large poncho, and similar snake patterned scarf pants as well open toed boots, answered her complaints. Because Lord Orochimaru has ordered us to hunt down the demon as well kill it and bring its remains to him for his research. The mummy looking man answered, as he's the only one who is actually dressed for the weather, while his teammates were getting heavily soaked by the rain. Why the hell do we need the demon? I don't think that Lord Orochimaru can overpower a demon can he? Asked the second man of the team, as he has spiky black hair, as his outfit consists of a beige shirt with a black strip around the sleeves and waist as well three prints of the kanji for death on the front, a hapuri attached to his headband, black bands around his forearms. As well the same snake patterned scarf pants and open toed boots. I don't know, but I don't care either since the supposed demon is most likely just some rogue jonin in disguise. The mummy looking man stated since the only demons were the Bujis, and all nine were currently sealed within Jinchuriki in different villages. Funny story about that since I've never graduated or become even became a shinobi. A demonic sounding voice spoke out as the Odo team quickly pinpointed the source coming from above them, as they looked up seeing a hooded man standing several branches above them. So, in a way, I am not a jonin, nor am I a ninja. He added flexing out his claws as he jumps down faster than anyone could blink kill the two men, by severing their heads as their bodies dropped, leaving only the raven-haired woman. And the girl looks at her now dead teammates as she say while shaking in fear, Dosu's Aku the Odo Kanoichi stuttered in fear as she stared at the decapitated bodies of her dead teammates, before darting her eyes directly towards the hooded man, as he shook the blood off of his clawed hands, as she quickly realized that she's now facing the demon, as she's thinking that this is how she dies. Yaya Chan forgive me she mentally apologized to her lover back home, since she'll never see her again. Well, what do we have here Naruto growled as he looked the ravenette up and down, as his hands shifted back to normal before walking towards her, as she fearfully stepped back until she was pressed against a tree, as he parted her damp hair from her face. The beautiful maiden within my forest, let's get you out of this rain and back to my den he said stroking her cheek, leaving the woman confused and distracted, as her face was blushing really bad, since she still thinks that she's going to die before getting knocked out. Though you even smell like the snake rapist, you're defiantly too beautiful to kill. He said as he hoists her over his shoulders before taking her back to his home where they can warm up. Meanwhile somewhere else within a cave under a massive tree serving as shelter for two teams which are from the same village, Kumo, as they were discussing what to do while waiting for the rain to stop. How the hell are we going to find the demon within this massive forest as well after all this rain? A man with a darkened skin tone and short spiky white hair questioned while twirling a lollipop within his mouth as he's wearing a grey overlong headed shirt, black pants, and red braces shin guards, along with a sword strapped to his back before glancing outside to see the storm still raging on. Your guess is good as mine Amoy, especially since this rain isn't letting up. Answered a woman with matcha skin tone and long spiky red hair covered with a white bandana and amber colored eyes, as she's wearing a long teal short sleeve dress with a white corset around her waist, which shows off her pear-shaped figure from her perky cup bust to her wide curvaceous hips, fishnet stockings. 
Eye boots and simple yellow earrings and a long sword strapped to her back. What do you think Samui? She asked with her arms crossed turning her attention to another woman. The woman, identified as Samui, has shoulder-length blonde hair styled in an asymmetrical bob and icy blue eyes as well, an extremely curvaceous herdless figure, which was hugged by her grey low-cut dress, showing a lot of her double J cup cleavage, as well the mesh bodysuit underneath, a charcoal skirt that reached the middle of her thick-toned thighs, as well her plump firm heart-shaped rear. And a pair of black calf high open toed boots as well as tanto strapped across her lower back, but before the blonde bombshell could even speak, someone else from the other Kumo team cut in. We might as well take this as a sign, since we haven't found any leads as the first day hasn't even went by yet. Complained a man with spiky blonde hair parted in the front as he's dressed in a black Slavelle shirt, pants, and elbow-length arm guards as well red-white striped shin guards. I don't know why we are even doing this, since Kanoha should have their own dogs doing this instead of us. They added seeing this as a waste of their time and talents, since each of them are Chun and Jonin going undercover as Jenin, just to help Kanoha with their stupid imaginary demon problem. See, I understand it's so uncool that we have to find a demon, which is clearly their own problem, but Rakage-sama as well the council said that we could use this chance to capture the demon and bring its DNA back to Kumo to see if we can use it as a bloodline. Samui said rubbing her shoulders and back since her extra heavy hooters were seriously a hassle while running to find shelter from the storm. Really you capture me it would be more like I would capture you because unlike you, I know this forest like the back of my hand. An eerie sounding voice echoed around the cave, followed sounds of something sharp scraping against the stone walls. Both Kumo teams looked around with weapons drawn as they gathered around each other, trying to found where the scraping noise was coming from, while another woman with long dull blonde hair tied in a long ponytail bound with taut bandages, as she's dressed within a short-sleeved black purple blouse, black pants, which had a cloud design on both legs and purple fingerless gloves along with a chain of blue beads, wound around her left hand forearm as she feels something going on within her mind. Hidden, whatever you do, don't anger this person as he or she is growing stronger with each passing second. Warned a voice within the woman's head as she doesn't understand what her biju was even talking about. The woman, now revealed to be a jinchuriki, began speaking within her mind. What do you mean Nibi? What are you she began to ask, but quickly cut the mental connection, as everyone heard the scraping getting louder as they continue to try looking for the source. They continue to hear noise getting louder before it suddenly stopped as they slowly separated looking away to be sure. That was seriously uncool Samui breathed putting a hand against her chest, never noticing a figure appearing out of the shadows behind her. Well, either I have died and gone to heaven, or you have been banished from there, the demon huskily growled getting the busty blonde's attention, as she quickly turned around to see the demon staring directly at her. Because I'm seeing a goddess of beauty standing before me he added as the Kumo Kinoichi stepped back and drawn her tanto, as she attempted to strike the Yuzumaki, only for her weapon to break upon contact. So very uncool she said under her breath in a disbelief tone at seeing her blade easily break before getting grabbed by the demon, as everyone watched in horror as she was pulled into the shadows, as they all quickly ran out of the cave running outside into the rain. Crack boom. Lightning flashed through the canopy as the remaining Kumo Shinobi Kinoichi drew out their weapons. Up there. Amoy shouted pointing his sword upward towards the treetops, with all of them looking upward to see Demon of the Forest with his claws out, as another flash of lightning light up the canopy as the demon vanished from sight. I, I was truly sure th there wasn't no demon. Just another missing nin on the loose. Exclaimed a woman in fear as she has porcelain skin with short chestnut brown hair styled in a crop bob and blue eyes, as she's wearing a black midriff blouse, which clung her perky cup bust to matching colored combat as well skirt, red wrist warmers, stocking, and shin guards, as well a pair of black sandals. Well look like you assumed wrong ran. C shouted wishing that the Raikage would have assigned his partner Derry to this mission, but knew that as he was neat back in the village. Crack boom. Again, someone say that I'm a ninja, even when I was never one to begin with the demon spoke out appearing behind the woman known as Ran, before disappearing with her through another flash of lightning. Two down, four to go he mused as the remaining Kumo group heard the sounds of the demon, sharpening his bladed fingers. Sensing something rushing from behind him, Amoy quickly turned around to block the demon strike with his sword. Just what are you then? You talk like a human, yet those arms and hands say otherwise. He questioned taking a closer look at the demon's hands and forearms, seeing that they were covered with thick black scales, as he leaped back avoiding another strike, while Kurai and C tried attacking him with their sword shrouded with lightning chakra, only for their attacks to be blocked, as they were pushed back with such force. Ignoring the electricity dancing around his body, the hooded demon spoke as he glances towards the white-haired Kumonin. Now isn't that the true question, what am I? The answer is simple, and yet very complex, as I'm a demon. But what type, I have no idea. 
being used answering the man's question, while quickly avoiding the side strikes by the two remaining Kumo Kanoichi, as well a powerful lightning jutsu from the blonde Jonin. Demon or not, we have a mission that we're going to complete. Yujito stated with fearful determination now seeing why Nibi had warned her about this guy. Crack boom. Lightning flashed as the Kumo Jinchiriki stared directly at the demon, her nails extended turning into claws, as she striked at him with her hands coated within blue and black flames, as the two traded strikes and blows, as they were both locked in a stalemate. Staring into the female blonde's eyes, the hooded demon spoke. I sense something familiar within you, something I've sensed within another whenever I travel through the village he said with a slight growl, pushing her back as she easily bounced back blocking her strike towards his head. But while I've sent someone within the village, they have the scent of sand, blood, and tanuki, and yet your scent is different smelling like cat and fire, I wonder why. He questioned in an amusing tone. This caused Yujito to stiffen as this gave the demon an opening to hurl her over him and into an incoming Amoy, while C and Kari are shocked as they as well the rest of Kumo knew about the blonde's Jinchuriki status and that the demon can easily tell just by sensing the Nibi within her. Crack boom. Like always, the demon disappeared within a flash of lightning as the blonde Jonin and dark-skinned Ritet stood with their backs against each other, followed by the recovering Amoy and Yujito. This is bad, the council has gone mad, sending just the six of us to capture a demon. Not only have we lost Samui and Ran, now this demon knows about, you know who. If I didn't know better, I'd say the council and Lord Raikage send us purposely on a suicide mission. The white-haired swordman said only to get smacked by the Jonin leader. Don't talk bad about Raikage Sama Yubaka, as if he would actually send his best Jonin to die in the home cowardly tree huggers who can't even keep their own great shinobi from dying too early. C spat with bitterness since it's bad enough that the demon was outmaneuvering them, but it had to be in Kanoha of all places. Me I can understand since a majority of Kumo never liked me to begin with since you see, being the Raikage lapdog that you are, we're only here to make sure I didn't defect, despite all my years of loyalty to our village, and now Samui and Ran had paid their arrogance with their lives, the female Jinchuriki hissed leering at the Jonin, since the Raikage's brother gets more respect than she does. Just by being related to Kumo's current and previous Kages, well she was just an orphan that had this burden placed upon her without her consent. Crack boom. Well, this sure is interesting, a team that's united and yet so divided the Kumo Shinobi Kinoichi heard the mocking voice of the demon echoing around them, but couldn't pinpoint his exact location. Then how about you face us like the demon you are instead of hiding like a coward? Kerry called out in an angry tone as she was getting of this demon play cat and mouse with him. Crack boom. As if answering her demand, the demonic Yuzumaki reappeared on the ground across from them. Me. A coward. Well now I feel insulted since the only coward I see here is him. He called out as he pointed a clawed hand towards C who is shocked by this. Wait, C's the coward. Amoy said confused since his red-haired teammate always called him the coward because of his overthinking. I'm no coward, I'm an elite jonin as well Raikage Sama's personal bodyguard. The blonde jonin argued feeling that the demon was mocking him, typical Kanoha behavior. I've heard what you said about Kanoha, and by my guess, you have either some strong dislike or hatred toward here, whatever the reason. Or deep down you're very insecure since you know that compared to Kanoha, Kumo could and never be able to stack up in comparison, the demon stated with mockery in his voice, as the Kumo Jonin clenched the handle of his sword in rage. Like I'm going to take some stupid shit from a stupid demon that this stupid village can't even handle themselves. C furiously yelled pointing his blade towards the demon for even daring to mock him. Seems like it's the latter if you're feeling this insecure. This behavior will lead you to an early grave. The demon stated as the Jonin lost it and rushed over to attack him. See. Amoy, Kerry, and Yujito yelled plead for their commanding leader to stop, but the next thing everyone knew is that the demon exhales a fierce stream of black and white fire, directly hitting the Jonin. Ay 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 ay. See screams of agony were loud and quick, as the flames released by the demon burnt him alive until there was nothing left behind, not even ashes. After witnessing such a horrifying death, the three remaining Kumo trio felt any chance of surviving extinguished just like their leader, as they shakily stare back towards the demon who was rubbing his throat. As I've just said, his insecurities would, and have, led him to his grave he said through a few coughs of smoke, as he began approaching them with his eyes glowing. Amoy, having enough of this, stepped forward as he draws out his sword. You guys get away from here. I will hold him off as long as I can. He told him remaining teammates hoping to buy them some time to escape. Amoy you baka, are you nuts you've seen what that demon just done to see, you won't last long. Kerui shouted thinking that her once overthinking paranoid teammate had finally snapped. Plus, it won't work since he knows the forest better than any of us, remember. Yujito added recalling how the demon stated that he knew this forest like the back of his own hand. Perry, for once in your life just listen to me and run. 
The white-haired swordsman yelled not taking his eyes off the slowly approaching demon. Both you and Yujito have to head towards the tower in the center of the forest, just like that proctor said. If you're there, you two will be safe and inform Lord Raikage about what happened. Now just go and leave this forsaken place. He told them as he charges towards the demon with a lightning chakra coated sword strike, as the demon blocks it with his arm, as the two began their duel. Better listen to him kitten, now get going Naya. Nibi urgently screamed within Yujito's mind as the Jinchuriki grabbed Kari as they began running off into the forest, before taking a final look back as they watch Amoy jump back away from the demon, as he tries another strike, as they ran off as the rain masked their crying, as they were about to lose another comrade as well a good friend. Crack boom. Once the two Kanoichi were far from sight, Amoy looked towards the demon, knowing that there was no possible way that he would survive. They're gone, now I have to hold you off so they could make it there. He calmly said leaping up through the branches as he jumped towards the demon with a downward strike. The demon caught the incoming strike with his clawed hand, as the dark-skinned man was stunned, as the electrical sparks from his lightning chakra danced around his body. They won't get very far, I love the thrill of the hunt he growled as a flash of lightning shone his fang smile. What you're doing is truly honorable, I will be sure that you're buried with honor as you will the only one to see my face. I could give you that much before you die. He said as he uses his free hand to remove his hood, showing his face towards the Kumo Nin whose face was stunned with shock. Before him was the face of someone he and the rest of Kumo knew a lot about. Namikaze. He exclaimed within his head not believing that he and his teammates were fighting the thought to have been long dead, fourth Hokage, that even the Raikage respected as he was trying to figure out how this is even possible. So distracted by the mind-blowing realization has left Amoy opened as he was stabbed through the chest, snapping his mind back to reality, as he was lifted up as blood dripped from his mouth, as the demon spoke to him. It would be dishonorable not to know the face and name of the one who killed you. He said as his voice lost its demonic undertone. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am the demon of the forest, rest in peace, Amoy-san. He introduced himself as Amoy's grip upon his sword loosened letting it drop onto the ground, as his eyes glossed over as he was now dead. After that Naruto pulls his hood back up before sealing up the body and sword within a storage scroll planning to bury the Kumo Shinobi later, as he jumps into the trees to finish his hunt, as there was now only two remaining. Kroi and Yujito kept running through the forest as they realize that they don't even know where the center of the forest even is. Crap, how are we going to find the center of this forest if we don't even know where it even is? The dark-skinned Ritet shouted in frustration as they were completely lost along with being very tired as well soaked to the bone. Crack boom. Before the two Kumo Kinoichi could even think of anything else, they see the demon appear before them in another flash of lightning. Perry glared at the demon steading her fears to call out to him. Where is Amoy? What have you done with him? She yelled demanding to know what happened to her teammate already dreading the answer as she knows what happened to him, but didn't want to accept it. Holding up a storage scroll he'd sealed Amoy's body at, the headed demon spoke at a simple monotone voice. He's dead, with his body sealed within this very scroll. He informed making the two women clench their hands as tears seeped from their eyes. If you want to hear it, your friend received an honorable death unlike the other. He added as he faces them once more with glowing eyes. Hearing him saying that caused the two Kanoichi to snap since they've lost Samui, Ran, C, and now Amoy just to get a stupid DNA sample for their counsel. You're going to pay for what you did demon. Yujito shouted as she activated her Buji cloak, as her chakra took on the form of a two-tailed cat, as she pounced into the air and began launching a barrage of mouse-shaped fireballs, as the flames were fueled by her rage and despair for the deaths of her comrade's friends. Seeing the incoming jutsu, the demon remained calm as he went through a series of hand signs. Water style. Title crash. He called gathering all the water that has been falling for the past few hours, refocusing it all into a powerfully intense blast of water, which extinguished the fireballs as well, crashing hard against the female Jinchuriki's body, cancelling her bougie cloak as she was slammed. Hard against a tree as she fell into unconsciousness once hitting the ground. Yujito. The dark shinned Ritet cried out rushing towards her fallen teammate, only to get intercepted by the demon, causing her to gasp and drop her sword in fear as she was truly terrified. Now then, let's take you both somewhere nice and dry. The demon said before knocking her out with a chop to her neck, as he created two shadow clones takes them away back to his home. Now then, I should probably check on Hinata-chan and Anuki-chan, since I should lend them a helping hand. He said to himself with his voice losing the demonic undertone, as he goes off to where his Haika cow and Inuzuka bitch are located via their mate marks. The mate was currently taking shelter inside of a large, hollow tree with a fire to keep them warm, as Shino was sleeping as Hinata and Anuka sat awake watching as the rain kept falling. Say Anuki, do you think that there's something going to happen? 
The busty blue tea asks as she's looking outside of their current camp using her Byakugan to keep watch for any chakra signatures that may try attacking them in their sleep. What makes you say that Hinata? Asked a fair-looking brunette as her two Ninkans were sleeping near the fire while she decided to stay up to keep her sister mate companied. Those gigantic snakes in the forest, those aren't known here in this forest. Hinata explained since while the forest does hold carnivorous beasts like tigers and bears, the only no ginormous species were leeches, spiders, and even centipedes, but not snakes. Oh, that's not good Inuki muttered with a grime tone, since all this rain has basically washed and doused away any kind of scent, meaning that her keen sense of smell will be somewhat hindered, leaving only her hearing. But I'm sure Alpha Sama has been handling them as we speak. She reassured since her master mate is very strong as she was looking forward to the day, she could sire his pups just like her older sister Hana, along with her mother, who had just been impregnated a week ago. Yeah, you're right I don't know what I was saying. Maybe I'm over worrying for nothing. The lavender-eyed Yuga said feeling relieved as both of them keep talking a bit. You may have a reason to be worrying as I recently fought some creep calling himself Orochimaru, as I got the feeling that he's planning something. Spoke a voice that they knew all too well followed by a familiar person appearing just behind them from the shadows. Naruto sama Alpha sama Both Konoha Kanoichi Whispery exclaimed with joy, wanting to keep their excitement to a minimum, since Shino as well Akamaru and Fang were sleeping just a few feet from them before realization hit them both. Wait, Orochimaru, as it the snake san and himself, Inuki exclaimed in a whisper as her eyes were wide hearing that her alpha had actually fraught Kanoha's infamous missing nin, once again proving his strength as well the perfect candidate to breed and father her pups. You mean as it one of the three sanins that we've learned about during our academy days, Hinata added, also whispering with Naruto looking confused about what they were talking about. We did. How odd, the only thing I remembered from the academy was most of my classmates like you too, as well Aruka's boring lectures. The demonic Yuzumaki said as his two mates sweat dropped as they remembered why he doesn't know about the Sanin. Oh writes, this was the following year after everyone thought that you have died, so the academy upped their lesson plans, including the dark side of Kanoha's past, with Orochimaru being one of them. The Inuzuka chimed since her alpha never did graduate from the academy like the rest of their class, especially since everyone had been assigned to different teachers after the deaths of Iruka and Mizuki, who was later branded a traitor. Crossing his arms, Naruto hummed in thought before speaking. I see anyway, you girls should tell whoever is in charge about that snake guy, since all the snakes seem to be originating from him. The inform giving both of them a kiss on the cheek, as well a hard firm squeeze on their rears, making both of them bite back a moan, before sinking back into the shadows, but stopped as he almost forgot something. Oh, here's something for your guys to pass, I think. He said unsure as he gives them three scrolls that the Odo and Kumo teams seem to have been carrying. Wh where did you find two earth scrolls as well two heaven scrolls? The busty Haika asked in shock since she's surprised that her master has given them what they needed to move on to the next stage of the exams. After that Orochimaru person escaped me, two of your fellow shinobi tried to attack me, as one was Makoto-chan's bastard son, while the other was a very scrawny man with bright pink hair as well a huge forehead calling himself a woman, as his voice was very shrill. He explained not seeing the two Kanoichi gaining very cold icy eyes, knowing exactly who he was talking about. Anyway, the duck asked Ichiha had dropped one of those when I knocked him against a tree. He added as the two chuckled in amusement, wishing that they had gotten to see the Ichiha leak getting tossed around. Before you leave Naruto-sama, me and Inuka-san has something we wish to talk about. The blue tea offered as both of them begin telling their master lover about the ladies that he could get. I see, I will keep them in mind Naruto mused hearing his mate suggestions about what other women he could claim as his. Thank you both for telling me this, but for now I have to head home to rest since I did a lot killing today as well having few guests waiting, once they wake up. He said before giving both his mates another kiss before disappearing into the shadows. But in the forest of death, the storm was still raging as day two had unknowingly arrived, as many teams of genins were still looking for clues, as those that are foolish enough to capture the demon were only following the signs to their deaths. I still can't believe they went along with us trying to gather anything on the demon that lives this place. Complained a young woman of average height, 5 ft 4 inches, as she has fair skin with platinum blonde hair that hangs long and loose reaching her calves with bangs cover her right eye, which were bluish green in color, as she has a slender curvaceous built frame with her outfit. A purple two-piece consisting of a sleeveless high-collared blouse that stops just under her ample double F cup bust, while also exposing her toned flat stomach and apron skirt that reaches down to her ankles with mesh armor underneath, as she's wearing some on her elbows, knees, and thighs, high-yield sandals, stud earrings. And pink lipstick as she wants to get out of this rain, which had completely dampened her hair and outfit as the heavily soaked fabric clung to her skin, causing her nipples to become erect. I have to agree with Eno. 
commented a man with a lazy tone in his voice as he stands 5 ft 8 inches, as he has black hair styled an upward pineapple ponytail, as well as short goatee, narrowed brown eyes as well a bored expression on his face, as his attire consists of a cream-colored coat, black pants, brown gloves, stud earrings, and calf-high sandals. Because this is way too troublesome since no one knows what part of the forest that this demon lives in anyway. He added agreeing with the now identified Eno since while the demon knew its way around their village, it was the complete opposite for them, since the forest of death was a literal maze which makes navigating all the more difficult. Yeah, meaning we are walking in blind. Added another man who was munching on some chips as was big and robust standing 5 ft 8 inches with short spiky light brown hair and goatee as well swirl markings on his cheeks, as his outfit consists of a red suit with plated armor on his torso, arms, and upper legs with the kanji for food on the chest plate, wrist guards, brown pants with a red belt. And calf high boots as he's using a huge leaf as an umbrella to keep himself and his chips dry. I don't know about you guys, but should we get out of this rain? He added since this weather doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon as he doesn't want to endanger his precious chips. Doji my old friend, as much I want to, we can't since we need to get whatever we can on the demon, or else we won't pass this part of the exam, even though I didn't want to do it. The first man said glancing towards the now identified Choji with a reluctant tone in his voice, as he knows that chances of finding a demon in a massive forest during a storm like this were extremely slim to even non-existing. Ino crossed her arms under her bust as she narrowed her eyes towards him. Well, I would like to get out of this damn rain Shikamaru. We've been searching for hours and we have nothing to show except being completely drenched and freezing cold. She again complained to the now identified Shikamaru, as she can already feel her soaked underwear riding upward against her pelvis and butt as well her tits feeling cold and numb as her bra was completely matted against her skin. What none of them knew however was that Naruto is above them as he's watching the blonde bimbo yelling at her teammates. Not as loud as that Sakura bitch, but a lot more pleasing to look at, he growled in thought looking at her heaving soaked form, as her heavily damp clothes clung to her slender curvaceous form, as he starts remembering her, along with her teammates. But in bits and pieces though, before once again growling as he clenched his eyes and hands, as his subconscious seems more focused on the Yamanaka heiress, remembering her bossy and spoiled attitude from when they were younger as he now has another target, but reframed himself as he continues to listen. I wish we had Naruto as our teammate instead of Yuino the Akimichi air sighs without thinking about his words, before realizing what he had just said, as his two teammates suddenly gained a somber expression upon the mention of, to them anyway, deceased classmate. Sorry I didn't mean to he began to apologize as Shikamar raised his hand stopping him. It's alright Choji, sigh I can't believe it's been this long now since he died, huh? The Nara air sighed since it has been years since their former classmate died, along with their teachers Aruka and Mizuki. Yeah, and I wonder what things could have been if he was still around spoke the platinum blonde, as she regretted the way she had treated her fellow blonde when she was still a fangirl. Watching as well seeing their expressions, the demonic Yuzumaki decides to leave them be, for now anyway. Wandering through the forest for two hours, Naruto soon found himself within a more open area, as he looked at the sky to see that it's still raining. But notices the faint side of sunlight showing a sign that the rain may be stopping sometime after a while, before quickly reaction to his instincts, avoiding several jutsus that were launched at him, as he sees several teams of genin from different villages, as they're grouping up on him. And here I thought you guys weren't that dumb or had any death wishes. He commented flatly with his hood on, as a man from an Iwa team wielding a hammer stepped forward. That's because Konoha couldn't handle their demon problem, showing just how pathetic they truly are without their precious Yan Dai Mei to handle this job. He taunted with a beepy sneer as the rest of his fellow Iwanin laughed in agreement, along with the teams from Aim, Kusa, Suna, and Kiri, as a few of them were from Konoha, as they glared at the foreign shinobi Kanoichi for mocking their home, but let it go, since they have a demon capture. Smirking at their arrogance, the Yuzumaki decided to taunt them before slaughtering them. Really, is that so? And who else in this area knows this forest as well as I do he said, releasing his Kai getting the arrogant teams to shut up and on edge, while some of the weaker willed ones dropped down, fainted as well made a huge mess within their pants. Oh, that's right, nobody else knows, but me. He roared bringing out his claws as several random bodies dropped with their heads severed off as the remaining ninjas were shocked as they didn't see him move. Now then, who wants to go first, he challenged with a bloodthirsty snarl as the remaining members of the teams from Kiri, Aim, and Kusa decided to scram not wanting to die, leaving only the remaining Iwa, Suna, and Kanoha teams. After a quick moment of hesitation, a woman with short black hair and pink-colored eyes standing 5 ft 4 inches wearing a red bodysuit with the right sleeve missing, fishna tights, maroon skirt with an opening on the front right side from the waist down, sandals, and gloves, as she has a slender built as she steps up ready to fight. 
How about me, Kuritsuchi, granddaughter of the San de Amitsuchikage? Or are you too scared to fight someone like me? The now revealed Kuritsuchi taunted calling the demon out as she's not afraid of some headed bastard. Plus, if I can ensnare this demon and bring it back to Iwa, then my village's honor shall be restored. Plus, someone this strong will make perfect for strengthening our forces even more. She planned within her mind since capturing the demon will bring honor back to her village as well gathering his DNA would also boost their forces. Really, living in this forest is a battle of life and death. Naruto said with a deadpan tone as the Iwa Kanoichi charges toward him with her quickly going through hand signs. Earth style. Earth flow spears. She exclaimed as she and the others jumped upwards to the treetops as dozens of spikes made from mud and stone burst up from out of the ground around the demon, impaling everything from the bodies lying on the ground to even a few shinobi kanoichi who were too slow. Earth style. Earth wave technique. The hooded blonde exclaimed slamming his palms against the ground, causing the area to violently shake, destroying the spikes surrounding him, starts disintegrating as the tremors were too strong, causing some of the trees to collapse, as the ones the Suna and few of the Kanohan ninjas were standing in collapsed, making them fall directly upon the giant earth spikes. Filling them all instantly. Guritsuchi was shocked that her jutsu was easily overpowered as the demon looked directly at her unimpressed, which caused her to clench her teeth and glare at him, while everyone else made their move, since his attention wasn't on them, as they all threw weapons and jutsus towards him, only for him to dodge his counter each one of them, before leaping towards some of the Iwa nins and sliced them down. Like they were nothing. You know if you want to catch me, then kick it the funk up a notch. He yelled as he's holding one of them by their neck, as they were a kanoichi with slender sender built and frame, as she has shoulder length brown hair and steel gray eyes with orange markings around the corner, as she's wearing an altered purple kimono dress with red trimmings and a yellow sash around her waist. And thigh eye stockings that merged with her sandals. Punky Ayu. She choked out with a smirk as she summoned a swarm of bees which surrounded them both, as Kuritsuchi took this moment to go through another set of hand signs, as she then slams her hands against the ground. Earth style. Earth wall justice. She shouted as massive stone walls rose up from the ground, trapping Naruto and the Iwa Kanoichi by blocking all four ways around them trapping the demon. Seeing their chance, the remaining Kanohanins jumped on top of the walls and quickly gone through hand signs fire style. Dragon flame jutsu. They all exclaimed breathing out massive flames from their mouths as the fire engulfed the demon, making them cheer, thinking they had finally killed it. Watching from the ground, the pink-eyed brunette crossed her arms with a smirk on her face. Thanks for your sacrifice Uzumabachi, you have brought back honor to Iwa. She said to herself knowing that the demon would still be alive, meaning transporting him back to her village will be easy. Elemental style. Elemental dragon barrage. The demon roared from within its makeshift prison as multiple dragons made up of different elements blasted around as the water dragon extinguished the fire while the boil and storm dragons collided against the remaining Kanoha genins ending their lives as their flesh were melted along with bones shattered while the earth, dust, wood, ice, lava. Magnet and lightning dragons destroyed the massive stone walls while the fire, scorch, and wind dragons spread throughout the entire area, disintegrating everyone and everything else within distance as the yin and yang dragons charged towards the Tsuchikage's granddaughter. Oh, this is going to hurt. Was all she could say before the two dragons collided against her. Beabu Uam. Every other teams that are far away from the battle suddenly felt a massive earthquake as some noticed a grand pillar of swirling yin and yang chakra in the distance, while others were unfortunately crushed and killed by the earthquake, those being the surviving members of the Kiri, Kusa. And aimed teams that ganged up upon the demon, but cowardly freed instead as they were either crushed by collapsing trees or had got caught within the aftershock of the jutsu. Here is in Saratobi, the former Hokage and leader of Konoha, was sitting outside of his home with his pipe, as the rain has finally stopped making him think that today was going to be a nice day, that was until he felt the tremors knocking him to his back, where he then saw a faint sight of the pillar in the far distance from within the forest of death, as he knows what caused it, wait. That can't be. It's a forbidden jutsu. He shouted in panic as he gets up to his feet and immediately heads toward the Hokage tower right away. Back within the forest of death, Naruto was carrying a severely injured Kuritsuchi and Suzumabachi over his shoulders, with his hood off as he's heading home with his latest hunt. Once he had arrived home, the demonic Uzumaki goes over to one of the empty rooms and placed both Iwa women on the beds so that they can rest before heading over to one of the other rooms to check on his other captives, before one of the doors suddenly opens it as he sees Samui, who has her tanto in hand, as she held her blade at his neck. Why am I here? Who are you? And you will let me and others leave. She demanded wanting answers as she had recently woken up finding herself in a completely unknown location. Maybe maybe not the whiskered blonde simply said shrugging his shoulders, making the extremely busty Kanoichi narrow her icy blue eyes. 
What do you mean by that? And why should I trust anything you say? She demanded pressing the blade of her weapon against his throat. Eyeing her figure up and down, the Yuzumaki demon mentally grins as an idea formed within his head. How about a challenge then? He'd suggested causing the Kumo bombshell to look at him slightly confused. What kind of a challenge? She questioned with narrowed eyes as she's looking at him to see if there was any trick. A challenge of stamina. He stated as the Kanoichi appears more confused. Challenge of stamina. Why? She once again questioned as she lowered her tanto a bit. Crossing his arms, Naruto began explaining his reason. Think about it this way, if you win, you and your friends are free to go. But lose he explained before trailing off a bit at the end. What happens if I lose? Samui asked with curiosity before getting nervous as the man before suddenly began leaking a small dose of Kai, as he moves closer to her making her back up until she was against the wall, as her massive priests were being pressed against his chest. Lose, then you and your friends become my slaves, he huskily growls as his voice became demonic as his eyes flashed crimson making the extremely curvaceous woman gulp. You you're the demon Samui exclaimed upon realizing that the man before her was really the demon of the forest, as she's thinking how very uncool her situation was. That's right, or unless you want to try to fight me and see how that will end up for you, he challenged releasing more Kai as well pheromones, as he firmly grasped her hips and pressed his pelvis against her, making the female blonde moan in defeat. Hey alright I I accept she accepted his challenge as she ain't going to fight, since she knows that he's too strong for her to handle alone. But in the room that the rest of the Kumo Kanoichi were in, the door slowly opens as Samui walks in under a powerful gain jutsu making it looks like she is wearing clothes, which was perfect timing as Kurai and Ran were waking up. The dark-skinned Ridet was the first to fully regain consciousness as she realizes that she was somewhere that clearly wasn't the forest of death. WH where am I? A and where are the others? She exclaimed leaping up to her feet looking around ready to fight. Hearing the familiar violent voice of her comrade snap the smaller brunette to immediately snap from her groggily state as she notices that she's on a bed before noticing the extra endowed Jonan in the room. Samui, you're alright. She excitedly exclaimed getting back to her feet as she embraced the busty blonde with worry, since she was the first one the demon took as she thought that she had died like Amoy and C. Finally noticing her team's captain, Kurai faced her with her arms crossed. Do you know where we are? She promptly questioned as her expression doesn't show it, but she was relieved that her friend teammate was alright and unharmed, as neither she nor Ran knew what was going on or what is going to happen to the both of them soon. Gently removing the tune in from off her person, Samui replies with her usual monotone expression. We are within the home of the demon. She coolly stated while in fact she was shaking struggling to even stand since she's still recovering from having fex with Naruto, as the game Jutsu also thankfully hid that as well. What? Both Kumo Kinoichi shouted as Ran covers her mouth in shock and terror. Aye if that's true th then we could map the location of here and informs Kanoha of where the demon lives within the forest, and she said in between tremors of fear, still shaken by the knowledge that they were in fact standing inside the demon's lair, only for the blonde bombshell to cut in. It won't matter since the demon knows this forest all too well, since he could easily find a new area to hide in. She blankly stated fighting back a moan as she feels Master Mate's comb dripping down her legs. Then what do we do? Kurai bluntly asked not liking the situation as she turns away from her captain, not seeing the glint within her eyes, as she dispersed the gain jutsu, revealing that she's naked, as the suddenness shocked the brown-haired Chunin, as she tackles and pins the dark-skinned Ritet against the bed. Samui. She yelled out in shock and fury, as her arms were restrained behind her back as her captain laid on top of her. We become Naruto-sama's slaves and mates. Samui declared in a crazed slutty tone, as she pressed her massive melons against her friend's back as well sliding her hands under her vest to grope her chest. Snapping out of her stunned state, Ran could only cover her mouth in shock, as she watches Kurai struggling to get the extremely busty woman off her back. WH what happened to you Samui? And who is this Naruto person you are talking about? She questioned as the blonde Kinoichi locked her legs around the Ritet's waist, forcing her into an upright position as she starts removing her top, never noticing as someone walks in and closes the door stalking behind her, as she continues to watch as Kurai tries to break free from her molesting grip. This isn't you Samui. Please stop this. She exclaimed only for her plea to be ignored as the blonde continues groping the Ritet's cup priests. Just given Kurai you will come to love Naruto-sama's monster size beat destroy your insides, just like I did she huskily cooed in her teammate's ear, as she moved one of her hands further down and cupped her still covered womanhood, making her temper flare. Who the funking hell is this bastard you keep talking about? Kurai shouted as her face was now completely red with both fury and embarrassment, wanting to know who this team is that had done this to Samui, so that she can shove her lightning-enhanced blade up his castle. 
That would be me suddenly said another voice in the room as Ran panicky turned around to see Naruto, who is standing there with his beep semi-erect. You know, I do enjoy seeing girl on girl action what do you say to a little entertainment Samui chan he said with a soft husky growl, making both Kumo Kanoichi pale as they realized that this was the demon of the forest, as the slenderer of them could only silently scream as he firmly placed his hands upon her shoulders. But in another room, Yujito was slowly starting to regain consciousness as she hears Nibi's voice within her mind trying to wake her up. Kitten, wake up. We have to go now cause the two-tailed biju began as her jinchuriki completely woken up. What's going on? Where are we? And what are you on about you damn cat? She bluntly questioned not liking the wake-up call from her tailed beast. The Nibi frustratingly purred as she finished what she was trying to say. I'm trying to tell that you I'm in heat since it's that time for me. She lashed out causing the ponytailed blonde's eyes to widen. And remember since you are my Jinchuriki, you are affected by it too. She finished making her host smack her forehead, since now was the worst possible time. Then to make it worse, you were captured by the demon of the forest. So, who knows what could happen at the moment he smells us. She added as they both takes this as a sign to get out of here and fast. However, it was then Yujito realized something. Wait, I can't leave. Not without the others. She said as she goes up to the door and was going to grab the knob before the door suddenly opens as Samui comes in and closes it as she's under the same game jutsu when she met Kurai and ran. Samui. She exclaimed in surprise as she had thought that the demon had killed her. Then Kami, we have to go and rescue the others and wait, are you okay Samui? She began to say but stopped as she noticed something odd about the bustier blonde. And her suspicions were right as her fellow Jonin tries to grab her, but quickly dodges as she gets away from her, only to then bumps into Naruto, as he grabs her by her arms as he smells her. Oh no. He smelled us, kitten. We're in for it now. The two-tailed cat panicked as Yujito agrees as she sees the whiskered man's eyes turn crimson red, and his left hand changes into claws as he swung it at her, which she thought that he was going to kill her, as she avoids the attack, making his clawed hand hit the floor, activating seals all around the building, making it so that nobody was getting in. Nor out as she quickly ran through the halls. Ruire. The demonic Yuzumaki roared as his pheromones were violently reacting as his body was now filled with lust, as he and his kumo cow began chasing after their prey. Yujito was running around the house, as she heard that roar making her even more afraid since that man was the demon. This is not good kitten. He's after you now. Nibi panicked since this was terrible as her host's face crunched up and distant. What do you mean me? Don't you mean us since it's your heat cycle that caused this? The purple-cladded woman retorted as she's angry that the demon was now after her because of her biju's time of the month. True, but there's no way he could get me my dear kitten. Did I forget to tell you that the blue flame-coated feline slyly commented, since the demon could never get to her, but her Jinchuriki on the other hand. Oh, if I survive this, as well when we get out of here, we will have a long talk. The ponytailed blonde sternly stated as she finds herself in another room, but this one was much bigger than the one she was in. This must be where that guy lives in, but why would he need a bed this huge anyway? She questioned looking at the bed as well the sheer size of it, since it looks like something someone of nobility would own. Nibi looked at the piece of furniture with confusion. I have no idea at all kitten. She stated completely unsure why the demon would even need a bed this huge, as neither of them had noticed that Naruto is behind the Kumo Jinchuriki with his claws out. The next thing both of them knew was the sudden feeling as Yujito screamed as she was stabbed right through her back as she feels immense pain, but there was no blood, as her back has seal marks around where the demonic Uzumaki's arm was, as this was the seal that held the two tails, as it was breaking, as the biju was being dragged out as he pulls his arm out from her back. Once his arm was out, the seal on the Kanoichi's back faded in a wisp while within his hand, he holds an flaming blue and black orb and throws it towards the bed as it takes form of a sexy woman standing 4 ft 8 inches with a slender toned built and hergless figure, consisting of a pair of large supple double G cup priests, slim toned waist with a flat and flexible stomach. And thick curvy hips with a huge plump juicy ass, connecting to long lusciously toned legs, but the most noticeable features were her hair, which was made of blue colored flames with black streaks and matching twin cattles, as well her eyes, which are different colors as the right one was yellow, while the left one was green as well, having cat-like slit pupils. Noticing that she has somehow been turned into a human form, the Nibi began to freak out. Wh what? How? How did he do she questioned in a state of both confusion and panic, before getting knocked down as her former host was thrown next to her completely naked as well. Naruto was sitting on the edge of his bed as Kurai, Yugto, and Nibi were licking his beep with their stomach so full of his kum, as the latter two now bear his mark on their shoulders, as he has Samui on his lap, making out with him, as Ran was groping massaging her freest, as their stomachs were too full of their master's kum, making them all look pregnant with quadruplets. 
Separating from his bombshell of a cow, the demonic Yuzumaki looked down at his newest slave's mates. Now then, once you ladies are done receiving your meal. I'm going to resume my hunt for that snake he said with a husky domineering tone, making them all shudder with pleasure as he smirks before latching his mouth on one of the bustiest blonde's tits, sucking upon her wrecked nipple, as she moans loudly enjoying the feeling of her master's mouth around her tit, as she couldn't wait to begin producing milk for him to feast upon. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.